Selamat datang di Jakarta Content Week Sinergi Asia Tenggara yang diselenggarakan oleh Yayasan 17.000 Pulau Imaji dengan dukungan Direktorat Jenderal Kebudayaan, Kementerian Pendidikan, Kebudayaan Riset dan Teknologi Republik Indonesia serta Lembaga Pengelola Dana Pendidikan LPDP melalui program pemanfaatan hasil kelola dana abadi kebudayaan. Welcome to Jakarta Content Week Southeast Asia Synergy, the 17,000 Islands of Imagination Foundation in collaboration with the Direct Directorate General of Culture, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology of Indonesia, and the Education Fund Management Institution, LPDP, through the Cultural Endowment Fund Utilization Program proudly present road to Jakarta Content Week, Southeast Asia Synergy. The event aimed to bright the literary worlds of Southeast Asian countries, overcoming challenges such as language difference, geopolitical barriers, and the lack of previous initiative to connect our diverse literary communities. Additionally, it would be beneficial if the works of Southeast Asian writers could be more recognized in their own region compared to works from other parts of the world. In a moment, we will start the CSEA Publisher Forum and Pitching Session. I will call our moderator who will guide today's session, Weda Star Tesdi. Weda Star Tesdi joined Compass Gramedia Publisher about 15 years ago, starting as a junior editor in Buana Ilmu Popular Publishing House, one of the lead children's publishing houses in the Compass Gramedia Group. Currently, she is the International Project Manager at Gramedia International. Her responsibility mainly is to manage the relationships of publisher in the Gramedia Group with overseas publisher for business purpose. Gramedia International also acts as an agent for seven publishers in the group. Currently, she serves the Indonesian Publisher Association as the Vice President for International Cooperation and Relations. For Weda Star Testi, the floor is yours. Hey, <laughs> thank you, Franz. Hi, everyone. My name is Weda Star Testi. So excited to be here. I will be your moderator for today's session for the next two hours. So be prepared and don't be sleepy because we will hear a lot of exciting ideas and books and titles from our publishing friends from CEA and also from Indonesia. But first of all, before we begin, I would like to welcome Masiani who will accompany me here and also helping me to introduce the session and explain about the session protocol to you. Okay, Mas Yani, please come in the front. Check, check. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yani Kurniawan. I am the general manager of uh, the 70,000 Island of Imagination. So, uh, welcome to the C Publishers Forum and Pitching. Uh, so, basically, the whole idea of this event that comes comes from the uh, sudden realization that perhaps now is the correct timing to like back to our roots. So, uh, Indonesia became uh, Indonesia became the case of honor in Frankfurt in 2015, and since then, uh, during that period. Uh, from 2015 and 2019, we licensed uh, over 1,500 titles abroad. But then the data stopped uh, during the COVID, and that got us thinking perhaps that while we do uh, aim to license our content, our titles uh, abroad, perhaps it is also time to get to know our neighbor better. So that is why now here I think this is a perfect opportunity to know some of the friends from uh, our neighboring country. We have uh, our friends uh, from the Singapore, from the Philippines, uh, from uh, Thailand as well, uh, and then 
uh, Malaysia. So I think it is time to get to know better each other better. So, and, and I think the the uh, this is basically only the titles, like the C Publisher Forum and Pitching. But the idea, the core of it, is to get to know each other better, and then become friends. And when you're friends, uh, anything is possible. For example, if I know Edmund, and then someone offering me some titles which perhaps not suitable for me, but I remember that might be suitable for, uh, for Edmund, then I can recommend it to Edmund, like vice versa. So getting to know each other, that's the core of the session. So I hope uh, by the end of the, so let's just make this, uh, don't, don't, be too, don't be too shy, I mean, just relax and everything should come up easily. We are here to get to know each other. We are here to become friends. So by the end of the session, I hope you, you will familiarize yourself with some of the names uh, in the Southeast Asia, get to know each other, and then you can may, uh, you may later continue to your, your conversation uh, by email or by phone or any means that you can. So, uh, so I guess that's, uh, that's the, the explanation of why this session is happening. So we are going to open with uh, our visiting guests. So from, uh, from the Philippines, uh, from uh, the Singapore, in Malaysia and from Thailand, we're going to start with Tian, and then from uh, Elite Agency, which is <laughs> kind of weird because she represents Thailand, but she's actually Indonesian. So, <laughs> and then we're we going to continue uh, with uh, 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 Pak Amir from uh, Malaysia, and then we'll go with Edmund, uh, and then we'll go with uh, Andrea. I'm not seeing Nora. Uh, perhaps then we go with Nora, and then uh, we'll random pick. The Indonesian out, uh, the Indonesian publishers. So be ready. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you, Mbak Okay, before we call Mbak Dian, I will read her short bio, yeah, and Mbak Dian can prepare herself. Okay, Sartika Dian Nuraini, born in Jakarta, 25 February 1990, in a dynamic professional with a diverse background and a passion for literature. Her career path has been marked by versatility, beginning with her tenure at the National Book Committee. Here, she laid the foundation for her deep appreciation of the literary world and built international networks. Sartika also took on the role of international rights manager at Borobudur Agency, IKAPI, for almost six years, demonstrating her commitment to promoting Indonesian literature globally. Currently, Sartika serves as Foreign Rights Manager at Elite Creative Co. Ltd. in Thailand, a role that allows her to excel in representing and successfully negotiating the sale of literary rights to various countries. So, Mbak Sartika Dian, the floor is yours. Please come forward. So, how, how do you say good afternoon in Thailand? Oh, Sawadika. <laughs> Don't forget Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Clicker, clicker. So, clicker tadi di mana ya? Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, ya, selamat sore. Om Shan Om Swastiastu, <laughs> Sawadiha. Ya, terima kasih uh, Jack Ten untuk undangannya. Uh, maaf, uh, saya bahasa bisa bahasa bahasa Indonesia, jadi mungkin saya lebih baik berbahasa Indonesia untuk memperkenalkan uh, grup kami. <laughs> My name is Sartika Dian. Uh, now I work in Thailand. I represent Prapansan Publishing Co. LCD and its affiliate companies. Uh, we were set up or established in 1961. Yeah. 1961, it's been quite some, some time, four generation already. And um, yeah, we set up quite few uh, imprints after a while and then yeah next 
Yeah, next. Um, yeah, here's the mild tone. Um, Prapansan, um, in 1990, we, we were uh, the ones who, among other publishers, that uh, were successful in publishing pocket books. So we are the king of pop, uh, pocket books at the time. And then in 2017, we create an elite creative literary agency uh, because at the time we have to serve the four imprint that we we have. Um, and but there are other demands that comes from other publishing houses that uh, that are outside of the group. So um, our elite creative literary agency uh, offers. Uh, services to other publishing houses as well. Next. Yeah, next. Here's our, uh, the directors. Next. Uh, here's our, the imprint that we have, Women Publisher. We only publish fiction, only for uh, women. Uh, and um, nowadays we also publish non-fiction as well, but by women writer. Also Asian manga. Uh, we imported some manga from uh, ta from other countries, including Japan and also yeah many uh, like Taiwanese right now is uh, very popular that they produce uh, quite good quality of manga as well. And Rainbow Publishing is also uh, our imprint for the manga because uh, as you can see, Thailand is uh, the um, our total book sales are 60% manga. So everyone who publish manga, please come to Thailand to offer the book or come to our literary agency to, <laughs> to maybe uh, sell to Thailand. So yeah, we also have uh, VIRF, which is a platform to buy and sell rights. So if you uh, have a publishing house, uh, you can also join VIRF to uh, trades uh, rights there or maybe just display your catalog there or display your product there or get connected with some publishers that you uh, have no idea before yeah we we now have quite few 200 uh, or more publishing houses that join VIRF and this year we will be the official platform for IIBF uh, 2024 yeah next so we publish ebook and book, magazine and e-magazine. Uh, we uh, import rights and export rights. So yeah, but because uh, the whole ecosystem needs some some more revenue, so we also uh, do event organizing as well. Next, this is this are our, our platform. Next. Uh, so our elite uh, creative literary agency represents uh, some uh, quite important uh, publishing houses uh, around the world from, for exclusive uh, and non-exclusive based, which is uh, okay lah in Thailand. But of course, uh, we also open for Indonesia if Indonesian publishers would like to, you know, outsource or maybe would like to know some titles, we, 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 we can send our catalog for you. Or maybe if you have a special or a specific titles that you want to have, then just contact us and we will uh, try to reach uh, uh, their, the, their representative or maybe rights agent for you. Next. Next. We publish... Uh, as a Prapansan group, we publish fiction, non-fiction, short stories, philosophy, self-improvement, academic, LGBTQ book, children's book, young adult, adult literature, and comics and animation. Next. So here's the title that we imported. Uh, one of them are also Cigarette Girl from Indonesia. Um, we have uh, also some uh, boy love from uh, like Taiwan. We buy also some, some quite some books uh, in the past, like Herman Hesse. We, we are the sole publisher for Herman Hesse. Next. So every year, we imported uh, most likely children's book because the, the market is quite big. So yeah, we, as Prapan San, we, next, we will uh, introduce some titles uh, that we bought 
from the Philippines, we have Malong, and we just got a translation grant from the NBDB. Thank you for that. <laughs> Next, uh, the power of connection. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a Kassan Blanc as well. Uh, we bought it uh, in 2019, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or 2018 when we met in uh, Frankfurt. I mean, my boss met uh, the, the CEO of uh, Kassan Blanc at that time. We bought uh, a Good Habit series, Tiwo and yeah, Tiwo Piggy, Piggy Blank, sorry. The sixth title, I couldn't write it because uh, it was a uh, you know, blackout. At the <laughs> sorry, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, Laura is here. Say hi, Laura. <laughs> nice. Former boss of Kassan Blank. Uh, okay. Next, uh, we bought quite some titles as well for, from other country, Euro European country. Next. Sorry. Uh, for the vampire, yeah, it's also quite selling well. In, yeah, in, in Thailand. Taschenburg, Germany. Next. Uh, it's from ADB. We bought uh, five titles. Next. From Yayasan Lidara, <laughs> we bought some titles from, uh, actually from Borobudra Agency, <laughs> from Wanung. <laughs> Wanung is uh, very popular in ASEAN. Huh? Nobody can beat Panung for that. Next. Grupo uh, Adibe, next. 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 We bought quite a lot of titles actually. So Thai publishers are very, very proud when they buy rights. So I am buyer, I am buyer, <laughs> things like that. So <laughs> please uh, uh, do some trades uh, if you haven't uh, done any trades with uh, Thai publishers. Next. 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 Yeah. Uh, it's next. Next. So yeah, we, we just uh, bought from Singapore, uh, Forest Friends. It's like a educational book for the children to, to learn about uh, sustainability. So uh, for this past uh, five years, we focus on sustainability to teach uh, all the children to how to, how to clean everything, <laughs> how to do everything, or how to uh, put everything in the right uh, order, something like that. So yeah, it's kind of actually um, like um, a project that we collaborated with uh, some uh, corporations like Bangkok Bank, something like that. So yeah, it's quite a, a good uh, project actually. So Bangkok Bank uh, eventually uh, will donate like some books for the all the library of in the in the in the kingdom of Thailand, and yeah, we kind of uh, provide this service. Thank you. And next. Yeah, that was it, but this is what we can do for you. We can do swap titles, we can do translation grants, I mean, we can propose, and we can, as a distribution partner in Thailand, we will, from PIN to, from print to sell, to, to maybe as your book or distribution channel, we will do it for you. So, if you are a publisher from maybe Indonesia or Singapore, maybe, Filipino would like to sell some titles, you can do it through us. Next. These are our original title, uh, Once Upon a Dream. We also do it a uh, uh, swap, swap title. We just done it with uh, MCL Publisher. We publish a series book to Thai, and this Once Upon a Dream will be launched soon in IIPF. Please applause for <laughs> MCL Publisher. <laughs> and next. Yeah, we just also published uh, these three books. It's a collection of short stories, Whisper of the Other World, The Dream Digger, a message in the box, in the box by Anjali Viva, which is, we open for swap title. So everyone who would like this title, please contact me and I will send it to you and then maybe we could do some, you know, you know, like I will, or we will publish your book in Thai. Next. This is uh, actually the national artist of the Kingdom of Thailand that we aggressively promote. Uh, it's Seksan Prasad Ku because he's very senior and we, we love his work and his work, I think, deserves to be translated to Indonesian publisher, uh, to Indonesia, sorry, Indonesian 
and also to other languages. So I believe uh, if you would love these titles, I will swap with everything that you have to be published in Thailand. And also the translation Give grant. your uh, words, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Of course, Mbak, harus begitu, Mbak. Kalau okay. enggak, wah, susah juga ini. Next. Okay, this also the Barefoot Billionaires. We just launched it in Asia Book, which is this. Uh, we just published this uh, 2,000 copies in in three days. Sold uh, 1,000 something copies. So it's very popular. Kunying Vinita Vini Chaya Kun is like a very popular, very well celebrated lintas generasi seperti itu. One Sudah year, sangat in, tua. One year oh, in Bangkok and your pronunciation is already <laughs> impeccable, Dian. Thank you so much. I take it as a compliment, actually. So, yeah. So, Kunying Vinita is uh, actually a very senior writer. It's very, like, white elephant. Uh, 300 more books uh, uh, were written by her. And I think it deserves uh, a heart in you. So, uh, I invite everyone that... Uh, perhaps can publish this book or acquire this book, yeah, we can do something behind, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, next, maybe. Uh, this is, we have sold it like, I'm airy in a couple of uh, countries already, so, but in Indonesia, not yet, so please contact me as well if you want to have some, like, a little story from Thailand about, uh, about Thai women who got in prison things like that yeah dark story actually but no problem right sometimes life is dark next 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 so this is just the event that we do to support uh, the yeah the company next 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 yeah next okay thank you so much please take a snapshot on my email address I will open my email to you because I'm quite open. I'm not that secretive. Yeah? Please contact me anytime. Uh, 24 hours seven. I am ready for you to help you to, to find your you know title that you want to like acquire. I'm so happy to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madian. Thank you so much. Hope all success for Prapansan and Elite Creative. And the next one, we would like to hear about the company and about the book that they publish or everything news from Amir Muhammad from Buku Fiksi. Let me read his short bio. Amir Muhammad is the founder and managing director of Buku Fiksi, a Malaysian publishing company with a focus on urban fiction. Since 2011, it has published almost 300 novels and short story collections, including about a dozen adapted from the Indonesian language. He also produced movies under the company Kuman Pictures. So, Pa Amir, please come forward. The floor is yours. Please give big applause to Pa Amir. Hey, terima kasih. Selamat sore. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back here in Indonesia. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a very short <laughs> slide. I feel I didn't put that much work into it. So I apologize. This slide is actually very short. So those of you, some people may feel cheated by the shortness <laughs> of this slide. So uh, yes, yeah, so we started in 2011. And um, up to this year, we have about 300 uh, titles. Uh, next. Uh, these are, we don't actually publish that many translations because it takes a lot of work actually to publish <laughs> translations because you have to check the translated copy and then compare it to the original and then with all these rights and all that. So it's a bit of a hassle. So we don't do it that much. But once in a while we, we do it um, for fun. So the, we started with Stephen King and Neil Gaiman because, you know, it was like my fantasy to have a contract with Stephen King's signature uh, and Neil Gaiman's signature. So I thought, oh, it's like life goals, right? So we started with those um, kind of with a bang. Um, 
and these are some of the others. Um, so I put the highest sales and lower sales. So as you can see, you know, sales are not great like, for translation books, partly because Malaysia, among the middle class, everybody speaks English. Uh, so they would read them in English anyway. Uh, so the idea of reading Stephen King in Malay is actually sounds a bit funny to most uh, middle class Malaysians. They would go like, ew, why would you do that? Uh, so, but we did it anyway. Um, so the lowest selling one was something I did as for pure fanboy purposes because I found out David Cronenberg wrote a novel. So I said, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, because I'm a fan of David Cronenberg, the filmmaker. But oh boy, did his novel flop. So, <laughs> but I have a contract with his signature, so that's enough, I suppose. Uh, the one that sold the highest is um, The Fault in Our Stars, because it was uh, made into a movie. So we translated the English, the Malay title is a bit cheesy, lah, the Tulis de Bintang Bintang. Uh, so that one, a lot of people bought it because they thought the idea of a Malay fault in our stars was such a cute idea. So they just bought it and put, posted it on their Instagram. But I don't think they read it uh, because everybody just read the English version. Um, so some of the others, uh, there lah, uh, Eleanor and Park. I was a bit conned by that because I was told a movie was going to come out, but it never did. So, so the still sort of stagnated. Um, and the last two were actually by Malaysian writers, but they write in English. Felicia Yap and Hannah Alkaf. So we chat. And, and the next one is um, from Arabic. So this is our first uh, um, attempt to translate something for Arabic because um, I like the fact that it's a modern Arabic novel. I mean, um, when you mention Arabic in Malaysia, it has very religious kind of connotations. So we thought, oh, if we can make money from that, why not? Um, but actually, this, this, this is not really any... Uh, a religious novel. It's not like Ayat Cinta or something like that. It's about, it's closer to like Twilight. It's like a, of a vampire and a jinn, that kind of, not, uh, not vampire, jinn. So it's a, it's a kind of a fantasy love story. So it's called Haujin, uh, H-W-J-N. Of course, it's Ha Jin, Ha Wow Jin Nun. Um, so that's coming out end of the year. So we hope to try this thing where we publish kind of non-religious Arabic books or like secular Arabic books to see how they take off. Uh, so, so yeah, these are uh, foreign books. So next. Uh, next. Okay, from the start, I knew I wanted to publish Indonesian books because, you know, I grew up reading uh, many Indonesian titles. Um, so the first person I met when I started publishing in 2011 with Pak Nung, who is standing over there, sitting over there. So it's quite true what the previous speaker said, Pak Nung is very famous in ASEAN. So I knew I had to meet him to Minta Restu. Yeah. <laughs> so I met him and I took the first two there on the top left. These are the first two Indonesian titles we took by a writer named S. Mara Gade from uh, Surabaya, kind of, I think. And um, she's still alive, but most of her books were written in the 80s, 80s and 90s. So she has, for those of you who don't know, she has kind of like Agatha Christie kind of, a, they're all murder mysteries, right? And um, she had written about 35 books by that time. So I took two. Uh, we, we shortened the titles because our books all need to have one word titles. That is part of our brand identity. Um, so I took it for purely... Uh, capitalist reasons because I thought this woman has 35 books. If I take two and they sell well, I'm sitting on a gold mine, you know. Um, but yeah, I didn't work out. So, <laughs> and in fact, those two are probably the, the two lowest selling uh, Indonesian books. And I was a bit bewildered. Why are they so so low selling? You know, these are crime books, got sex, uh, got got humor. You know, and so why didn't they sell? And I later found out why, because when I checked on Goodreads, you know, reviews lah, among Malaysians who read it, and you know, one review said she doesn't understand the book because the characters have no handphones, because it was set in the 1980s. Now I thought, what a useless generation. So, <laughs> so that explained why. So that's when I found out that 
to reach a young Malaysian audience, don't set a book in the past. They won't get it. I mean, you can set it 200 years ago, that's fine. Because 200 years ago, you can make up anything. But if you set something in the 80s, or people will go like, Ooh, what is this? Apa itu cassette? Apa itu VHS? You know, so they, they find it weird and they're a bit offended. Like, I don't understand this book. They have no handphones. So yeah, that's why I didn't sell. And I did discuss with Pak Nong, I think, how come Istri sold less than Swami? Because Istri is our lowest book, 1,500. And he answered very wisely. He said, because most book, writer, uh, book readers are girls. So mereka mencari suami, bukan mencari istri. So, <laughs> so I later published uh, a few. Uh, this is one to, uh, we published a few by Nuril Basri, who is a writer I discovered purely by chance when I, when I visited in the uh, Indonesian book fair, the Senayan, that one. And then I bought a book and I read it on the plane. And I thought, oh, this, this is so interesting. So I looked for him on Facebook and I, I asked, oh, how do I get the rights to this book? So that's when we started a friendship that has gone on for over a decade. So we've published several books of his. So sometimes Nuril tells me he feels more appreciated outside Indonesia than inside. Then I said, never mind, you can be like Agnes Moore, you know, so that... <laughs> For some reason, he didn't take it as a compliment. But uh, <laughs> so I think he's a very good writer. He's very funny, very human. But yeah, and um, so we published uh, the latest we published was Gula. And I think one of his earlier books, Dosa, it was translated by Pat John McGlynn as Not a Virgin. I came up. And our best selling title, surprisingly, the one that sold 18,000 copies was uh, this one, the lower one, uh, Garam. Garam, the original title from Gagas Media was Mystery, Mystery Patong Garam, I think. So we reduced it to Garam. And I think it sold better in Malaysia than in Indonesia. And um, because it's, I think it's a very good detective uh, kind of story. Uh, so, and this one, and um, some of the uh, Katasis also we reprinted when it came out on um, video. So these are the Indonesian titles. I'm not sure if it's complete, but these are pretty much the Indonesian titles we have taken. Lah, where we, we, we adapt the language, but other than that, we don't edit. I mean, we don't change the writing style. We just you know, adapt the vocabulary lah, to make it more palatable lah, to a Malaysian audience. Okay, next. So this is, uh, so I'm going straight to overview already. So I told you this slide is very short. So if you want to find out what sells well in Malaysia, go to Instagram, look for MPH, which is the main chain bookshop. So on fiction, you can see these are the Malay uh, best-selling titles. Um, we published the one at number five. Um, we didn't publish the rest. You can tell because they all have more than one word. So obviously we didn't publish them. And um, all the ones with male, males, male names, like Zol and me, I don't know. Oh no, that's only one. Sometimes it's more than one. So they, they tend to be like uh, love stories. So they're all local, mostly romance, except I think number six is a thriller. Um, number one also is a thriller. Uh, number nine is kind of like slice of life. Yeah, the rest are, are romance. La. And then um, number four, I'm sure you know, that's the only translated book. La. It's from Korean, it's quite a well-known um, Korean book. So just for your uh, info also, these are the best-selling non-fiction Malay titles. As you can see, the number one uh, fiction writer and the number one non-fiction writer is the same person. Unfortunately, I'm not publishing him. Um, I would like to. So... I hope he gets dissatisfied with his current publisher <laughs> so that he can make me rich instead. It is so. a series for the Pelukis architect. Yes, uh, it's a non-fiction series where he writes about his life, uh, where he started off as a university student and then he, he earned money by drawing on the streets of London. Uh, so, and he's now a successful architect. So he's very famous on Instagram. You can find him on It's Teme. Uh, he's famous because, and partly because he never shows his face, he obscures his face. Um, and the captions are always, oh, tengok rambut pun tahu handsome, you know, so. <laughs> uh, the one who wear mask, yeah? Yeah, yeah, he wears mask in public. So he's very famous in uh, Malaysia. So, and number six, obviously, is a translation. 
psychology of money. And you know, it's just to give an idea of the kind of book that sells well in Malaysia. So we are quite open to Malaysia, uh, Indonesian publishers or writers to contact us directly. If you write horror or thriller, between 50,000 to 60,000 words is kind of ideal. Uh, and we'll see what we can do next. Yeah, this is the, the kind of thing we go for. Lah. So you may contact us directly and um, we'll see <laughs> what we can do for you. Uh, next. Oh, that's the end already. So um, yeah, my email address is there. So feel free to contact me. Thank you once again. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Amir. Please give big applause to Amir. Uh, we publish mainly in Malay uh, because that sells better, but we also have the occasional English title. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Amir. So before we heard a pitch from our Indonesian publishing friends, we would like to hear the short introduction of the publishing houses and also what kind of book that they publish or what kind of book that they might want to acquire from Indonesian publishers. So we will start with our international friends. I would like to call for the first is Edmund from Epigram. <laughs> Please, Edmund. Um, I was only told after I arrived that I had to do this. So I have. So I sorry. That yeah. is actually very Indonesian things to do. <laughs> so we uh, we all, yeah. Yeah. So we I have uh, these are the titles minute. I presented in the earlier session. If you were here, um, mainly Epigram started in um, 2011, mainly to publish Singapore authors. We started in 2011 mainly to publish Singapore authors and mainly to publish fiction because, well, when I started, I, I looked around in Singapore and I felt, you know, there wasn't, I, 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 I have to say, uh, I, I, there were Singapore publishing, but I just thought they were not good enough. So I, I decided, you know, when I was 60 years old, that, why don't I go into do book publishing? So I've been doing do book publishing. I'm 72 now, so I've done it for 12 years. And I think, uh, I hope when I'm 80, I can stop, right? 20 years. No, but <laughs> and anyway, around 2015, uh, I think just around that, maybe two years after that, yeah, around 2017, we felt, uh, maybe we should publish Southeast Asia as well. So I had gone to Malaysia and some people came to me and said, why don't you publish my book? I publish only in English. I think, uh, do you have English language publishers in Malaysia? I'm sure there are, right? But for some reason, they came to me. I don't know why. I went to the, uh, some festival and they approached me. And I thought, yeah, why not? So I published a few. And then I started thinking about this thing that I had uh, spoken about earlier, how we should publish Southeast Asia so that we can all understand each other a bit better. So in 2019, 2015, I established a prize for fiction called the Epigram Books Fiction Prize, where I think it's still the only prize in, in, uh, in Singapore that will, publish non, uh, that will publish unpublished works. So it's a manuscript prize. You submit a manuscript, and if we like it, we, you get the prize and we will publish it. And in 2019, we open it to Southeast Asia. So if you see some of the Southeast Asian titles we publish, this all, most of them came from uh, submission to the Epigram Book Prize. Uh, and this is what we continue. We suspended the prize one year, last year, but this year we have started again. The entry just closed. You, this time, you can submit it, it. The price is in English because we only publish in English. But you can submit a translated book. You know, you can write in Bahasa Waiba. If you submit an English translation, we will consider it. 
So this year, the price just closed. We had 55 entries, from mainly from Singapore, but quite a lot from Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, uh, Brunei, uh, Tha uh, uh, Thailand. Surprisingly, nothing from Philippines. I think they must have all gone to Penguin Random House. Uh, yeah, so we're reading them now. Uh, yeah, I, I've got a manuscript in my bag that I'm nearly finishing. I'm very happy that it's a wonderful book, I think. Anyway, we have judges who will judge it. Now, I don't have a slide. I don't know if you want to see. Do you want to see this? Yeah, perhaps just uh, some of a few. You can yeah, so very quickly, uh, the books uh, in 2017 to 2018 are not part of the book price, but subsequent to that, most of them came from the book price. Uh, the most successful is uh, in 2022, where we published The Accidental Malay. Uh, in Singapore, maybe it has sold a thousand or maybe slightly more than a thousand, which is the no quite normal numbers for Singapore. But in KL, this uh, title has sold about seven to eight thousand, seven, yeah, around seven thousand, and and still selling. And it has just been sold to Picador in London, so the the UK version has just come out. Uh, Philippines, we we did get some submission from Philippines, and they were quite good, but in the end. Uh, we didn't publish any for a long story, but we didn't publish any. These are three books that we published. Uh, we bought the rights because uh, we wanted to do more comics in Singapore. And it, apart from my very famous book, The Art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai, we found that we will not be able to get more comics from Singapore. So we said, what, since we are looking at comics, uh, uh, novels, from Southeast Asia, why not do comics as well? So these were other ones that we have bought from Philippines. Uh, Elmer was nominated for an Eisner, and it really is an incredibly good comic. Uh, what else? Uh, next. Indonesian. Uh, we published a book by Nuriel. Actually, it came from uh, Amir. For some reason, he, didn't, he, he had done the translation, done the but pull out of publishing at the last minute. I'm not sure the reason now. And it was offered to us, and I, you know, we love it, and we said, yeah, we would publish it. But we changed the title. I think it was originally Rata, or something, one word title from you, uh, or something, I can't remember. But we changed it to Love, Lies, and Indomie. And that, yeah. So we changed it to Love, Lies, and Indomie. Uh, Coming Home is a comic by... Uh, Indonesian comic writer Tita uh, Larasati, Larasati, yeah, which is a uh, comic about her life coming back to Indonesia after spending years in, I think, uh, Netherlands. Uh, Java Enigma is written by a Singaporean, but set in uh, set in Southeast Asia, mainly uh, Indonesia. These are two novels by the same person. Also came in from the Epigram Book Prize, set in Brunei. And the last one is a, a Thai novel. Uh, I mentioned this earlier on, right? Uh, her name is Western, but she is a Thai woman. She's married to an American, uh, Sunisa, about the, a love triangle between uh, three students during the student uprising of 1970 in, in, in Bangkok. So, um, yeah, so we are very open to publishing novels by, in English by Southeast Asian writers. Uh, I'm, I don't have a slide of everything we do, but I have got a catalog of all the books we've published. We've published uh, since we started in 2011, same as Amir, uh, Buku Fixi. We have published, I think, over 400 titles, uh, nearly 500. But we publish from children's book to uh, from picture books to middle grade titles, to fiction, to graphic novels. A few non-fiction and one or two cookbooks every year, but the bulk of uh, what we do is fiction. Before COVID, we published about 50 titles a year. Now, um, since COVID, we publish about 30 titles a year. 
people think that epigram is well, big. And actually, we are not. Uh, in Singapore context, nobody wants to publish because you don't make money. But I, I think it's important to publish, so I publish. But we really don't make a lot of money. In fact, most years we lose money. So we, uh, yeah, but, but that's, that's what we do. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Edmund. Edmund. I leave okay. the catalog here. I leave the catalogs here. Anybody who wants them, please just help yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the next, we will have Andrea from Mil Flores Publishing, the Philippines. Good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, I think I also misunderstood the instructions. <laughs> so you're going to see a different kind of presentation. I'm pitching two titles, one fiction and one nonfiction. But don't worry, I have a QR code in the end. You, you can find uh, our latest catalog, although it's not complete. It's very far from complete. So Mil Flores, I bought in the pandemic year of 2020 when I left my big trade publishing job as its GM. Uh, I was, used to work for a large trade publisher, and I thought it was about time to start my own. So I bought this um, from uh, the widow of a writer who used to, he started it in 2011. No, he started it in 1999 and died in 2011. And the widow was just distributing all the previous books that he had published but was no longer publishing. So I asked, because the name of the company was very close to my name so I couldn't resist even though it's really much more difficult to pick up an old company than rather rather than a small one the the founder of Mill Flores uh, wanted or uh, thought that Mao Zedong's um, saying that a thousand flowers bloom uh, was important so he was into diversity and picking up all sorts of ideas and I thought that was a good value as well for a publisher. So, next slide. Uh, okay, we're an independent publisher. I can't read it from there. Uh, we're known for literary fiction and upmarket nonfiction. Uh, aside from our adult literary titles, we also do children's literature, uh, reference books, and a few textbooks. Next. Uh, so, uh, Technically, when I bought in 2020, we didn't come out with anything because we were doing the books. So we started in 2021, and look at the awards we have. And I'm telling you, just because they're winners doesn't mean they're sellers. Okay. <laughs> okay, next. So this is the first book I'm pitching. It's called All the Lonely People. Uh, it's written by this wonderful author with fantastic language. It's just sad and the sadness of it permeates every word i think next um so in our lives sometimes when we lose things we find ourselves and this is the very theme of the book it's about uh it's intertwined stories of people who have lost things that sometimes are little things that you lose you don't know how important they are in your lives next uh it's set in Metro Manila. So Manila, if you've been, and I wish you'd come there, it's more stressful in, than Jakarta, I feel. Okay, it's a city that has no time for your heartbreak, so when will you move on if you can? So it's a novel of six intertwined stories of people who lose things and find themselves in the process. There, these people are from six, uh, from different walks of life. You have an OFW, an overseas Filipino worker, a mistress, an ex-con, and a recovering alcoholic, a restless older woman, and a heartbroken office worker. And they all find catharsis in the midst of their brief encounters with strangers, and they grapple with loss, loneliness, and an alienation in a crowded, cruel Metro Manila. Next. So here, actually, the book is um, playing with place as character. If you come to Manila, I don't know if you have this in Indonesia, Metro Manila is um, a city of 14 million people, so the public transport looks like this. So we've been said it's been said that we are one of the happiest people in the world, but even if we are um, uh, like in your, in each other's faces, uh, there's no eye contact, there's no engagement. So in in our connect connectedness, there's no real engagement. So this is what the book is 
the theme of the, the recurring theme of the book. And it's actually talking to this generation, the most connected generation, but really the most disconnected generation as well. Next. So, like I said, uh, we lose keys, wallets, cell phones, rings, IDs, but their loss can turn our days upside down. But what really happens when we lose them? What about the people who find them? So through chance encounters, all these stories are told, and they're all intertwined in one um, novel. Next. Uh, OK, and these are the stories I can't see. <laughs> so I'm going to look, because I can read it here. So there's Via, once the betrayed, she's now the betrayer. She's fresh from a breakup and encounters a kind stranger she met in the worst night of her life. That's the first. And then you have Ronald. She's, he's still dazed after getting left behind by his family. He meets a 10-year-old um, boy named Waldo who needs to go home. Then Cindy, losing her engagement ring, hires a ring finder and along the way finds something else that she has been looking for. Then Gemma returns to a mother who has no memory of her and holds on to a um, person with disability ID uh, and a quest to find her long lost sister. Then there's Dan Ian who loses his phone and all chances of getting back with his ex. Next, and all this is logged in a log book and the keeper of that book, is her name is Maria and being in the keeper of that logbook, she's also the keeper of these stories. And we find out that she has the greatest loss of all. And the story is really about overcoming and moving on and having the courage to rebuild a life in that stressful city called Manila. OK, next. Uh, these are my comp titles. If you know Sally Rooney, Beautiful World, Where Are You? That's a very sad book. This is like that. Normal people, of course, if you read that book, normal people, right? They are not normal. And then uh, here, there's uh, another book, uh, Nanako no Thrift Shop. Uh, so uh, all about life, human relationships, and connections. And if you have seen Midnight Diner on Netflix, so the book is a bit like that. Next. Uh, we've sold Persian language rights. I we just got a message. This morning, uh, about this interest on TV, and I'm being asked to write a storyline. I say, like, really? I'm the one? And then we have interest for German language rights. Next. And this is the writer. Her name is Kanika. It's her debut novel. She's a graduate of the University of the Philippines uh, Program for Creative Writing, and she is an experienced writer, written for several publications. And uh, writing is really her life. Next. OK, <sighs> sorry. OK, and my next book is nonfiction. It's called Even Ducks Get Liver Cancer and Other Medical Misadventures. This, when I read the manuscript, I fell from my seat laughing. It was hilarious. And I didn't know it was going to sell. I just loved it. And now it's uh, our bestseller. Next. OK, so this is a collection of essays. Uh, of medical misadventures that will crack you up. And I'm going to go back here and <laughs> read the text. So the, uh, the author is an oncologist. And um, he was training, if you go back to the previous slide, he was training in a hospital called the Philippine General Hospital, which is uh, we know as the last refuge of the desperate. And uh, so he will tell you about his internship his fellowship in that hospital. The Philippine General Hospital is uh, there. You have a lot of um, indigents who come. And so you have all sorts of cases. And um, so you see the state of the medical, the, uh, medical uh, system in the Philippines. But he finds the funniest things in every case. And it's. Uh, it's funny, if you know the book, This Is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay, it's exactly like that. But Filipino yeah, version and uh, written in English. Both books are written in English. OK, next. And these are my comp titles. I already told you about This Is Going to Hurt. Uh, it's like uh, The Real Doc Martin. And if you know Oliver Sacks, it's funny. <laughs> also, also like that. Next. 
and I have comp TV series. This is going to, uh, when I was presenting this to this TV network, and I said, I have proof of concept. You know, this is going to hurt. It's already out. And he said, we're very bad at making medical drama. OK, fine. So, <laughs> and then if you watch House, not funny. This is like Sherlock Holmes, right? But um, a little bit like that, in that every episode is like a, an episode in his life as a, as a, a, a fellow in the Philippine General Hospital. Next. Okay, so I told you, um, it's a, first, it's, for, it's a bestseller, and this is one of the winners that actually sell. Uh, and we made history in the National Book Awards when it tied with another nonfiction book. Uh, we've sold Arabic language rights, and I have Thai language rights. I'm sorry, sorry to come. Maybe can I give you another book? <laughs> Next. And this is the author, so he's a practicing oncologist. Um, and uh, he wrote that. <laughs> himself. I don't know if I should read it. Uh, Wilfredo Lianco is a medical oncologist who obtained his medical degree at the UP College of Medicine and trained in internal medicine and medical oncology at the Philippine General Hospital. And this is where he tries to be funny when he is not holding clinic or taking photos of his action figures. He writes about his friends who mostly consent to their car caricaturization of their lives. He likes reading fiction, comics, distressing over non-issues, hypochondriating, and remembering that things don't matter. Okay, next. That's it. And I'm sorry I didn't flash everything, but that's my catalog. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Andrea. Take a deep breath. Okay, big applause for Andrea from the Philippines, Mill Flores Publishing. We have the last one from our publishing friends from the CEA. Uh, I would like to call Nora from the... No? You don't want to introduce yourself? Okay. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe I'll give you the short introduction. Nora is from Penguin Random House Southeast Asia. So if she will sit there and then... And also hear what you pitch. So don't worry. You will have our friends from... Southeast Asia, from Singapore, from the Philippines, from Malaysia, and also from Thailand. So we would like to start our Indonesian publishing to pitch. Please make it short because we ran out of time. Please make it about four minutes each of your pitching presentation. And I will be your timekeeper and Mas Yani will help me to uh, set you in orders. Masiani, can you help me to call the first okay, one? Okay, I'm going with uh, Nora Publishing first. So, Shera, you're up. <laughs> the floor is yours. Okay, if you have long presentation, just make it short. Yeah, my friends, so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Okay, yeah, you uh, can. So, yeah, this is Nora. Please go ahead, Shera. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Shara. I'm the Foreign Rights Acquisitions Editor at Nora. Okay. Um, so a, little, uh, a little bit about us. Uh, Nora Books was established in 2012 as part of uh, Mizan Group, uh, which is one of the largest book publishing uh, groups in Indonesia. We have published hundreds of local and foreign books from various genres, including children's, young adult, literary, thriller, parenting, self-help, psychology, philosophy, memoirs, biography, and religion. Uh, these are some of our uh, foreign titles that we've published. Um, the children books, uh, these, these are some of the children's books that we acquire from Asian countries. Uh, we got uh, from Tayo, from Korea, and also some books from uh, China and uh, Japan. Uh, these are the books we acquired from uh, SEA country, actually. Uh, I'm afraid that we have only acquired from uh, Malaysia uh, so far. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, add more uh, from other uh, CAA uh, countries. And, uh, these are the types of books that we are looking to acquire. Uh, so the first one is uh, if it's a, a bestseller in its uh, country of origin, uh, it will really help because then we know that uh, the book has a uh, readership. And 
and also the if you have an English uh, uh, RC, it would be preferable whether it's a full manuscript or a sample that we uh, have for, for us to uh, review. Uh, review copy, review copy, yes. And so if the rights have been sold in multiple countries, that would be also uh, a plus for us, and uh, and also if it win some awards. Uh, or it will be adapted to movie or TV series, particularly for uh, fiction books. And um, if the author is able to promote the Indonesian edition, like through social media or, uh, for example, through IG Live or through a Zoom event, that would uh, also be uh, helpful for us because Indonesians like to get to know their uh, authors. And the specific genres that we are looking for are thriller novels, uh, and for the nonfiction books are self-help, parenting, and children's picture books uh, specifically for toddlers. So these are some of uh, the rights that we have sold. Uh, one of them is uh, People from Bloomington, which uh, written by uh, Budi Dharma, uh, and it was uh, acquired. The World English uh, Rights were, were acquired by uh, Penguin US. We've also got some uh, books that have been acquired by Singapore. Pakistan, Carmen by uh, Facebooks Malaysia, and also uh, other uh, books acquired by uh, Kasi Terbit Malaysia uh, at the bottom, uh, trailer novels. And uh, these are uh, one of our local titles. Uh, it's uh, People from Bloomington, which I have um, mentioned earlier. So uh, this is a, an, a classic uh, literary short story collection by Woody Dharma. And the English uh, edition uh, has won a uh, uh, couple of awards, such as uh, the Pen Translation Prize and New South Wales Premier's Translation Prize. And uh, so the short story is about, uh, so it is set in Bloomington, uh, Indiana, where the author lived as a graduate student in the 1970s. Uh, so uh, this book is actually uh, first published in the 1980s. And in the in in 2016, uh, Nora uh, republished the books. We uh, republished the book, and so yeah, it's about uh, uh, the. It is um, inspired by the life of the author when uh, he went to the university in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. So uh, the stories in there are sectioned into apartment units and uh, rented rooms and grid by long empty. Uh, Streets and distances that can only be reached by car, and it's people where uh, it's a place where people can be obsessively curious about others while failing to uh, form genuine connections with anyone. The characters feel their loneliness acutely, even as they deliberately estrange those from around them. So these stories are a statement uh, about how everyone, regardless of nationality or race, is strange and subject to the same tortures, suspicions, yearnings, and peculiarities of the mind. Another uh, book is by, this one is uh, by Budi Dharma as well, titled Olenka, but this one is a full-length uh, literary novel. Again, this was also published in the 1980s, and we uh, acquired the rights, and we republished it in 2018. It has also uh, won uh, some awards, including CEA Wright Award in 1984. Uh, the story is about a man called Fenton Drummond, who falls in love with Olenka, the mysterious woman he encounters in an elevator at Tulip Tree apartment. He then finds out that she is married and has a son, but that doesn't stop them from having an affair, since uh, her marriage uh, is a loveless one. And Fenton's life turns upside down when one day Olenka just disappears. He, only, uh, he suddenly feels that his life is meaningless without her. He then tries to find Olenka as he tries to find the meaning of his life. Uh, the third title is called 2 AM. It's a Thriller novel by Chandra Bintang. Uh, it has also won uh, numerous awards, including uh, award from Ikapi Awards, uh, Emerging Writer at the Ubud Writers and Readers Festival, and also by Scar uh, Scarlet Pen Awards for Best Novel and Author of the Year. So uh, the story begins with um, three homeless youths uh, who are found dead. Hung, they are hung on the edge of a flyover in East Jakarta. Then another body is discovered with a wire tied around his neck. The police starts an investigation, but reluctantly. 
and they all have the same talk. Well, they're just homeless kids, good riddance. And it's as if someone is determined to clean up the streets of Jakarta to reduce the many complicated problems in the city. So the book will take readers uh, to find out who did it and why. And the fourth one is um, children's uh, picture book titled Thought Surprise. We publish it in first in Indonesian and then uh, we, we also publish it in English language, but uh, we only distribute the English uh, edition in Indonesia only. And the uh, Malay language rights have been sold. And last year it won children's book of the year at the IKP Awards 2023. Thank you. <laughs> So the story is about uh, a sot who is going to a birthday party, but uh, sot is very slow. So is he going to make it? So um, <laughs> the book contains a cute story and beautiful illustrations, and also includes educative information about sot. So I'm going to sh uh, show you some of the sample pages. So here you can see how the sot uh, is preparing a gift and. You can see the, um, his movement versus the movement of the other characters around him. For example, when he, he still tries to tie a ribbon, but the bird uh, can finish um, knitting a scarf, and the spider can finish building his uh, web. <laughs> and this is also, you can also see here he, how he walks very slowly. Even um, the old dog can, um, uh, can move uh, forward uh, faster than him. And the last title is called Fun by Time Stories. Uh, it's a children's short story collection and it's a bestseller for us. Uh, it has sold more than 12,000 copies. Uh, so it contains 10 charming fables for uh, children. Uh, and the stories, uh, for example, there are tales about a hermit crab who gets a new house and also a frog who wants to be a prince. And there are many other uh, fun fables. So. Uh, it has meaningful stories, beautiful illustrations, and you will also find uh, an animal fun fact at the end of each story. So this is a um, sample page of uh, one of the stories. Uh, it's called Kiki's New House. Uh, so uh, the hermit crab named Kiki, he cut in line when uh, his friends uh, uh, are queuing to get a new shell for uh, as their uh, new house. And then I will show you the... Um, oh, sorry. I will show you the spoiler here. So the shell cracked, and basically he regrets uh, cutting the line. And uh, at the bottom, uh, here you can find the fun fact about uh, actual fun fact about hermit crabs. And so that's it for me. And this is uh, our contact details. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Okay, uh, next, uh, I think I'm going to call someone from Yogyakarta, uh, Kanisius, uh, Rosalia, my Amy. Thank you. I'm a bit nervous here, so I prepare some notes. I just prepare four slides uh, for this event. Uh, this is the samples of our um, books that already translated into foreign languages, uh, mostly our children books. So Pitikanisius uh, is a publishing and printing house. Um, we we was established in 1922, so we are experiencing more than 100 years. Um, we thank you, and we also a printing house for uh, publishing and commercial and also packaging. Uh, we publish more or less 200 titles per year, and. Um, Yet with various themes, uh, I, we have children books, uh, school books, which is related with uh, national curriculum, and then we have textbooks for university uh, and philosophy and spiritual books as well. And the books, um, mostly children books, are ready to be licensed. Uh, please next, and this is uh, the sample of our books. Uh, uh, I I choose this books because uh, it has a beautiful illustration. Uh, the writer uh, is the illustrator as well. Um, we have a bedtime stories series. It consists of two titles and each title has 24 short stories that can be read separately. Uh, the right, uh, the copyright, uh, we already sold to 
India. Uh, it's already translated into Hindi by Indian publisher. And we now we are still processing the agreement with a Pauline publication from Kenya, Africa, for this book. And next, please. Uh, we have this one, Humble Face and Noble Grace. It's uh, actually it is a children books, but uh, I want to present here because it has a hand painting. So the writer is also the the, the painter. It's also a painter, and uh, he he made this illustration, and he already made an exhibition for these illustrations. It, uh, it's come from uh, the the Indonesian puppet story. Uh, I think it's it's most familiar, and uh, this book, yeah, um, I I want to present here the the painter. So I he he also engaged with in writing and has published several wayang books. You know, uh, this book is, uh, yeah, it's maybe it's simple. It's about two sibling, but. Uh, Maybe we can relate with uh, yin yang stories like that, uh, with two siblings with a contradictive character. Uh, yeah, maybe next, please. And this is the last one. Uh, this is a novel, uh, Tembang dan Perang. Uh, literally, it means song and war. Um, it's uh, written by Junai Distiono. It's an awarded author from from Java, and this book already translated into in English. Uh, um, we have the the English translation. If you are interested in this book, uh, the with the title Panji Quest, it's about um, uh, a Panji Quest. Uh, it's sorry. Yeah. Uh, the main character in this book is Panji and. It is, it is a historical novel by award-winning Indonesian author Junai Distiono. And then this book um, already translated by Dalang Publishing USA, California in 2021. And also in Malay by Kasih Terbit Malaysia. Uh, we have we have other titles here. Uh, we have so many titles, but I just present this, uh, this, this ones. I hope you, uh, you, I can I can show you in my catalog, and and we we will attend Indonesian Red Fair and then Frankfurt Book Fair. Uh, we will please to meet you there, and I can present the, uh, our other titles. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mami. Yeah, Mami. So next, I'm going to uh, call another one from Yogyakarta. It's going to be uh, Bentang Pustaka, Bude. <laughs> Please, uh, warm welcome to uh, Mbak Dewi Berta Harjono. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Dewi Berta Harjono, but you can call me Dewi. I'm from Bentang Pustaka, who a publishing house who located in Yogyakarta. Maybe you can, yeah. Yes, this is our office. So if you visit in to Yogyakarta, you can come to our office. Uh, we use uh, like a uh, traditional house buildings. Yes, and it's still, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and it, uh, we are living surrounded by uh, village and also uh, fields, rice fields, so it is so very natural. Uh, we are established uh, almost two decades from 2004, and we publish mainly local, local uh, novels. But we also buying rights, yes, for examples, like maybe you can see, uh, Especially, we buy our best-selling novels. But for Southeast Asian, uh, we bought some titles. Uh, we bought one from Malaysian, Faisal by Faisal Tehrani, and also from Singapore, uh, Nuri Fitachi, the de uh, Feng Shui detective. Uh, we, yes, and some of our authors are sold very well. 
uh, like Andrea Hirata and also Dilestari. For example, Andrea Hirata, Andrea Hirata uh, his works are two decades for since uh, phones printed, but still now it still uh, sells very well, best-selling in our, uh, our our market. And and we have for uh, imprints that is uh, fiction, non-fiction, young adult, and children. But for as for children, uh, it is uh, established maybe around two or three years. And we next. So I will present uh, three, three no novels, and it is a very, very latest novels. So maybe um, there is a. Uh, no, maybe not like no awards because it is a very, very latest. All of three are published in this year. The first is Rasia Salinam, or in English we translate it as The Girl with Secret Sauce. The novel is based on true events, actually in Java, in Solo. Yes, and this is, tells a story of a young man who curious with her with his family history. And he tries to trace back the history by tracking back his grandmother's secret recipe. So his grandmother is very good at cooking. And when uh, all the children miss her, they won't try to cook as well as uh, such delicious food, but they can because they don't have any idea about the recipe. Nah, so. Uh, one of the grandchild tries to to find out what the recipe, and then, but uh, as the journey goes back, uh, he find out that his grandmother uh, living a very hard life, especially when uh, in very hard times for Indonesians like in colonialism and also in modern era, and so if. You uh, are curious or want to publish? Uh, yes, I have an English version, so it's, it's English version is also available, and maybe you can contact us in rights at bentangpusaka.com. In this novel, you can find out about loyalty because it is about uh, uh, how to work in a noble family, and also colonialism, and also family saga. And then One next. more minute, Ma oh. Dewi. Okay, next. Ah, this is a golden physics memories. It's about a girl who really hates hearing any laughs because uh, the laughs reminded reminded her of one brute uh, Thursday in 1994. Yes, because she was raped by uh, by some strangers, and while doing so, uh, their their uh, laugh and. Uh, this is about uh, how people try to healing the trauma, especially trauma from uh, political violence. And besides, and we also will find some people who also experience some very hard times, uh, especially in uh, chaotic situation in 1998. Yes. Uh, Ah, and then Lucky Dari Neraka on the Man from Hell. It is a collection of short stories uh, written by a Indonesian political consultant, Ab Saifullah Fatah. But certainly, it is written. It is written when uh, the author still students. So we can see uh, the idealism of the author about the political. And in this uh, collection, we will see how the author highlights that in every single uh, things in our life is influenced mainly uh, by the system, by the political system, by, by the policy. And we will see how about uh, family life, uh, environment, romance, and also military dictatorship in the stories. So if one of you interested in or maybe to read more about uh, the titles, you can contact or send email in Reds and Bentang Pustaka. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mbak Dewi. Please give applause to Mbak Dewi Makasih, and Mbak Dewi. Mas Yani, who's next.
Oke, okay, next is uh, going to be uh, an independent publisher from uh, Jakarta. I'm going to call penerbit Anagram, Mas Doni. Hello. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Doni Ahmadi. I'm from Anagram Publisher. So I think this is... Uh, can I... This... Can you change the new presentation? Sorry. Yes. Okay, next. Yes, uh, Penerbit Anagram. Anagram is a small publisher in North Jakarta. We found in 2018. Uh, we are published uh, three or four books uh, annually. Uh, and we are focused focusing on uh, and showcasing new voices of Indonesian literature. And our catalog is, is included fiction and non-fiction, both from Indonesia and, and other country. Uh, we have a writer from Israel, from Chile, and from Japan. Next. Just like we talked before, so we, we publication is uh, dominated by the boot writer. Uh, this is a book of the, of the new writer or, or the first book from them. So I think I think we have uh, we have uh, say thank you for for the for the reader for the Indonesian book ecosystem because of several of our books is have been nominated for and winning for a national literary award. So next we we can presenting uh, of one of title. Yes, this is uh, one title that might be uh, interest. This is a sentimentalism Chalan Maya from Sony Carsono. This is a Sony Carsono debut fiction. This is a collection of X short stories. So this book says winning uh, the prestigious literary award in 2023, like a best literary book by Tempo, literary award by Ministry of Education and Culture, and Sutasoma Award in 2023. Next. Yes, uh, uh, what the judges say of about the book uh, and why the book is, is very interesting and, and winning more title because of this, I think. Uh, because the Sony story is, is offer an unconventional theme uh, with a writing style, with a leap, like a leap to the future because this, this story is mostly is writing in 1994. Uh, and 20, 20, 2002. So this plot is like a, unexpected and unconventionally. So you you can see the another thing of, of Indonesian literature in, in these books. Next. Yes, uh, what what people talk about the Sony Carsono works. Now I, I uh, screenshot this this uh, dialogue in, in last week. So we see the the people still talk about this book. Uh, like the first book is published in February 2023, and they still talk about about, about this book like uh, in the newspaper, in the in the good read, in the in the internet, like uh, Instagram and Twitter. So next, yes, what what is the Sony Carsono? Sony Carsono is a lecture in the specimen of Malay, Indonesia in. Hancock University in South Korea. They are Dr. Dijer, Dr. Dijer and so this is Asia history from the Ohio Uni University, US. His research is focused on how Indonesia since 19, the human body and urban landscape and social change and interact with technology, literature, visual art, and pop culture. So next, yes, this is a Another, another books like uh, new books from us. Uh, the these two books is published in 2024. 
This is uh, Afika Ayaeke. This is a poem from Aldian Sazura. Uh, some of people uh, talk about book because this this is a new voice of the queer literary scene in Indonesia. And also this is a Sapa bilang pelaut mata keranjang by Safar Nurhan. Uh, like uh, this is a, a novel, uh, the first novel from Safar. Uh, like the people people to read this book uh, says to me like this is a this is a, like a an Altman energy which is combined with the uh, adventure of Don Quixote La Macha from from Miguel Cervantes and but but the, this uh, this uh, the version is is Indonesian writer. One more minute. Okay, thank you. The next is. So sorry because I don't talk about all my book because but you can scan for this catalog right here. And next is thank you for 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 this presentation. This is the first time I presenting the anagram in the in the good sp space right there. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Because we, we are a small, very small publisher. We, we have a small team. Like, uh, uh, this is a uh, first time. So, but I also interest about the so this Asia book. So, so in in the next slide, this is uh, my email. So you can you can give me the the your best literary book. So we can consider to publisher. Thank you. Thank you so much, you. Anna Graham. Okay, just a quick note, everyone. So we will be doing a quick recap. So uh, give us a few days after the event. So we will be compiling every catalog you sent us. And also the, we will compile the contact information and send it out to you. So once, uh, perhaps next week, then you can, you can, if you feel like you miss anything, and you can revisit uh, the, the presentation that you've seen here today. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to call uh, your colleague, Mbak Weda, from Gramedia, Mbak Intan. Okay, Intan, please come forward. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm Intan from Gramedia International. I'm here with my colleague, Mbak Weda, and juga Farah. And we are here to thank Jack Ten for this wonderful event that connects us together. And um, I'm very happy to see familiar faces here, our book fair buddies. <laughs> and also, uh, well, the rest of Gramedia, like our manager, Manina, our editors, our writer, Lala Bohang here. And today, uh, let me begin my presentation with a glimpse of Gramedia. Okay, so, so sorry if it's a little small text. So Gramedia is a home for thousands of works of Indonesian and international author since 1974. We celebrate our 50th anniversary here uh, in 2024. And uh, a big celebration will be also held here in Taman Ismail Marzuki at the end of August. It's called Pesta Literacy Indonesia. You should come. And here in Gramedia International, uh, we not only doing the rights licensing, we also um, helping the Indonesian publisher to connect with the foreign publisher, especially uh, to find the suitable titles for uh, everybody in Indonesia, uh, and we do it through Water Lily Literary Scouts. And uh, this year, we also do international sales for export and import. We do it through Water Lily distribution. And next, we here in rights licensing, we are ready to assist you in these four categories, and we start for the first one: fiction. Okay, so for fiction, we have Zero, When Journey Takes You Home by Agustinus Wibowo. So Agustinus Wibowo will have his session here on Jack 10 tomorrow, so you should see him as well. So this one is a travelogue based on true story 
which tells a, a story of a traveler who's forced to come home to find his mother uh, battling cancer. And it is not your ordinary travelogue because it redefines the travel literature uh, back in 2013 where, um, next, thank you, where it presents the humble stories of a um, traveler where he deep dives into the society to learn about the struggles, to learn about the hopes, the dreams, especially when uh, he went to Afghanistan where there's a war there, and he learns many ways of life from there. And But the further he goes, the less he knows. So just like Loza say, um, he travels so far and, uh, with many flow of experience, but he doesn't know anything about his mother condition back home. So he still feel back, feels back to zero when he comes home. And next, okay. It, even though it's an old book, 2013, it still holds a 4.3 ratings on Goodreads. So that's why, next, Netflix brought the series adaptation following the success of Cigarette Girl, Reti Kumala, and it will be a starring Rio Dewanto. It will be aired this year. Thank you. And next, we're going to non-fiction book. It's called uh, A Man in Grief Who Finds Solace by Washing the Dishes. Uh, it is a self-help book by Andreas Kurniawan, uh, who just have a painful uh, experience of losing a child. And then he wrote this book. Next. Okay, so this is where he learns that the doctor cannot heal himself. He, as a psychiatrist, cannot heal himself when he lost his child. And he, during those period of grief, he learns that he cannot tell people what to do, how to grieve. Yeah, he cannot, um, uh, he has to allow people um, to grieve as long as he can. And, um, and every grieving process is a very personal journey. And for Andreas, washing the dishes is a perfect analogy for healing process. So when you wash the dishes, you clean all the dirt, and then you rinse it, and then you um, put it on the dish rack on the right place. Just like grief, when you put all the negative emotion, all the sadness, and then it will leave you on the happy memories only and a warm happy memories, you put it inside, you put it back inside your heart. And um, for this year, it is our mega bestseller. It sold, uh, sorry, it has a 4.5 ratings on Goodreads. And the persona, the Andreas, is also gained a lot of followers with 100,000 followers on Instagram. One and more minute. Okay, time. next. <laughs> for children's book, this is very quick. Balita Smart Toddle series. This is one of our popular IP here. Next. It has picture books. And next. It, this one is rights. Uh, the rights is sold to Vietnamese. Next. Thank you. And this is the activity books. And because this IP is gainly popularity of uh, the children, next, thank you, uh, because of the YouTube channel. It has 13 million uh, subscribers on YouTube, and this year they started to have a live show. Uh, that one is from Jakarta and Semarang, and you can see a lot of children like, buying merchandise and everything. So this is for the children. Bear with me, next. <laughs> okay, this is one last title. It is from our local artist uh, for horror comics, Journal of Terror by Sweta Kartika. Uh, he is an award-winning artist. And next, it has three volumes of comics, two novels, which rights has been sold to Malaysia. And then uh, there's also a limited series on Maxstream and audio series uh, on noise platform. And it's a ghost stories. Yeah, we know everyone loves ghost stories. Next. I just like this because it's like a line. <laughs> okay. And that's the sample of the comics. This is the um, 
cover of the comics and this is the cover of the novels. And next. Okay, thank you. Let's find out more through our link here. And okay. let's exchange card later. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So uh, next I'm going to call Peer Press. Kerja, you next. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, by the way, actually, four minutes is very short. <laughs> it's shorter than Pecha Kucha, actually. <laughs> I'm quite nervous here. Um, okay. <laughs> actually, I have 63 pages of presentation, but maybe today <laughs> I'm going just to present just a bit. Thank you. The red one with emojis. Jangan dihitung ya. The clock is not ticking yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, once again, I'm Frieza uh, from Pairpress, and this is our tagline. As you can see, we use emojis with the intention to appeal and resonate to the youth generations or uh, or youth uh, in general, and also with the intention to change the emojis to suit our moods. Sometimes when we are feeling rather in a good spirit, we change it to twinkling hearts. Sometimes when we are feeling rather hungry that day, we can change it to bread or whatever uh, emoji, food emojis existed. <laughs> and okay, today I'm not focusing to pitch pair press book actually, but um, I'm, I'm here to pitch uh, the services and collaboration opportunities that pair press can, uh, can cater, can offer to maybe other publishers uh, and also our publisher friends from Southeast Asia. Next. Yes, um, a little bit of background of what PearPress is. Um, PearPress is uh, actually, currently, is still a business unit of Simple Group. And Simple Group is um, actually, a, it is a storytelling consultant and creative content agency. And PearPress, as its business unit, is uh, uh, focuses on activities in the publishing industry. Um, and uh, Simple Group, uh, when we created PearPress, uh, when we created Purpose in 2018, 2017, or, or late 2017, and from that very beginning, we meant to have a sort of hybrid function to authors and also the industry. We serve and become a partner for various needs uh, for our authors and also our, our, collabora uh, our collaboration partners. And we, we, we sometimes um, call ourselves as, uh, as the think tank partner for these authors because, for example, if an author wants to publish a book, then we want, we find a way to do so, uh, either by offering it to our, either, either offering it to our publishing partners or offering it as uh, a self-publishing services ourselves. And we always, but we always leave it back to, to the author to choose uh, what kind of publishing uh, methods that, that they would like to uh, you know, go through on and uh, went through. And uh, another example is when the author needs more marketing efforts for, let's say, the dissemination of the book, then we, we can become their partners. And when there's a potential for adaptation to other formats, then we'll help in any way we can become their creative partners as well and also manage, their, uh, their, uh, manage this adaptation project. So in that sense, that's why here, we call ourselves as a publishing ecosystem rather than a pure publisher. And uh, next, please. As an ecosystem, we have Simple Group uh, on the left, upper left, uh, upper left side there. That's the logo. Uh, we have Simple Group as our book studio, and Simple Group helps Pair Press to provide great, 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 great care in the design of our books because. We aim to create a whole package of each of, our, of the titles that, uh, that are published or acquired by Pair Press. And uh, through our design, we want, to present, uh, we want to present the readers and the world an IP uh, of itself from a book, uh, ready with proper branding for each of the titles. 
and uh, on the middle, uh, upper middle side, there, there is a logo of Perfest. We have our own event IP called Perfest, which we held in collaboration with Jack Tent last year. And this year in September 27th and 20, uh, 29th, we will collaborate with the biggest creative festival in Indonesia called Idea Fest. So as you can see, if you, if you see the pattern, we, um, as a small publisher and a new one, we always um, emphasize on collaboration because in that way, I think um, publisher in our size can move more freely and more, uh, you know, uh, we can experiment, experiment more freely and also fluidly. <laughs> and also we, uh, uh, we I, I've also mentioned before that uh, Perpress is actually uh, not a pure publisher because uh, we also collaborate to, uh, with other publishers such as Gramedia Pustaka Utama and also uh, uh, KPG for our publisher collaborators. And with them, we work as their acquisition and marketing partner. And I don't know since when uh, our friends here and our publisher partners here believe that uh, Perpress can help to communicate, to package uh, the books uh, or the or the titles that we acquired One more in a minute, way. Ma Ica. Okay, Maeda. <laughs> in a way that can appeal to the to the current generation or to the current market. And also, we uh, in the middle left is uh, Focal. Uh, we are actually trying to build our um, online book club called Focal, and uh, it is actually. It's really uh, quite hard to build uh, uh, online communities. And we also collaborated with other partners such as Idea Fest, Jack Tent, Makassar International Writers, Festi Writers Festival, uh, Bintaro Design District, and also Idolaju is our speakers management partners. Next. Next. Next, maybe. Uh, this is just a glimpse of, um, maybe not a glimpse, Every every titles that we have published uh, with our partners and our ourselves as well. Next, next, uh, there is Masih Belajar from Iman Usman. Iman Usman is a co-founder of a, a big education uh, education startup companies, and there is Selfish is an anthology book by uh, five uh, five authors um, from Indonesia, and we package it as as if it's a zine. And there's Great Mind is a mental health uh, media. Next. Oh, sorry. Uh, the one with Asterix out up there is actually a bestseller and also mega bestseller. And and most of this book, as you can see, there is a logo of Gramedia Pustaka Utama on the right corner because we uh, it means we partner with them uh, with Gramedia to publish this book. We have Anthology Matahari, You Do You by Alexandro Ruby, which I think... Um, Time is up, Mbak Ija. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> which uh, already, um, I think, uh, it, it has become mega bestseller uh, books as well. Okay, so in this occasion, what we're looking for is a collaborator to publish our potential authors and to help uh, <coughs> to package these books or the new books wholesomely together with other publishers as well. Thank you, and I don't provide uh, context here, and we can exchange name card after. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maicha. So I'm going to do a quick count. So who who's here haven't uh, presented yet? So one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, six. So we still have a. Uh, since we we are a bit late starting, so uh, I'm going to tell you that we still have a half an hour, so let's do like four minutes max five maximum. So I'm going to start with uh, again start again with uh, Jeff, please from Asta Publishing. Everyone, give him a warm welcome. Jeff is actually from Philippines. Yeah, thank you, uh, Masiani. So once again, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jefferson Sampang. Uh, yes, Masiani is right. I'm a Filipino, but I'm based here in Jakarta representing Asta Ilmo Publishing. So again, um, I'm the uh, one in charge of the international 
um, sector for Asta Ilmo Publishing. So um, just to start with, um, I know some few familiar faces here through uh, fellowships and uh, international um, events and book fairs. So yeah, let's start. By the way, many of our foreign publishers also started in 2011. Am I right? So we at ASTA also started that 2011. Um, next. But uh, to give you a brief idea about the company, actually, we are under the umbrella of Mentari Group, one of the leader in distributing um, textbook and educational materials such as Cambridge, Oxford, Hodder, here in Indonesia. So we are under the um, Mentari Group umbrella, and we are the publisher for uh, this uh, company. And we publish education textbooks and also um, children's storybooks, mostly on picture books and um, highly illustrated um, storybooks. Okay? So, um, next. So we at ASTA, we publish um, textbooks. We have ELT, um, we have the ebook per TV for our uh, mother tongue here in Indonesia. We also uh, publish Mandarin for preschool up to secondary. And also we have the famous one, we have the rainbow, which have garnered already around the world for 44 countries, the rainbow series. It has English, math, and science. Next. So aside from uh, textbook, next one. Okay, next. So aside from um, publishing textbooks, we highly uh, promote also our readers or the children's storybooks. So we have sold 30 titles of this uh, series to 24 countries already. And the latest news, um, we have partnership, I think, with Thailand through Paknung and uh, Prapansan, they managed to translate our English titles to uh, Thai language. So these are the series that we have. We have 18 titles of stories of imagination, 12 titles of stories of little friends or the picture books that we have, 18 titles of stories of Indonesia. So um, I want to highlight actually the as the titles really um, helps Indonesian authors and illustrators only. So we, we make the Indonesian um, titles through English. So when we go outside of Indonesia, we always sell them into an English one. Okay. So we also have the new titles. We have 20 story, titles of Storyland and we have 20 titles of Storyland just this um, 2023. Next one. So our best sellers um, from Asta titles. So we have the stories of imaginations. We have 18 titles of them. And um, we are very happy that it was translated to uh, Thailand. And also we sold rice to Africa, uh, Tanzania, um, Zimbabwe, and I forgot the, the other one, sorry. So we have three from Africa. And then uh, just recently, we sold rice to one Lebanon. One more minute, yeah, sorry. Thank you. We sold rice to a uh, license to Lebanon and they managed to translate it into Arab. So 22 countries of uh, Arab, um, they sold this one. You see, the text already in uh, Arabic. So yeah, we are happy that Indonesian authors and illustrators are all over the world through ASTA. Okay, next one. So we also buy rights actually um, from uh, UK. Uh, one of the best-selling uh, magazine, we turn them into storybooks. So in each story uh, book, you can get eight uh, beautiful uh, poems and rhymes, classic uh, tales and fables, and also it has a uh, story time play box. Next one. And the Storyland, uh, actually nowadays it's hard to teach young children how to behave properly. 
So the main point of the Storyland series is to give um, kids nowadays the values, strengthening their um, characters, and practicing good habits. Okay, next. So that's it for ASTA. So hopefully, if there are authors from Indonesia who um, writes for young children and illustrators really for young children, we hope we can have you at ASTA and we can bring you around the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. Next one, Masiani. Okay, next is uh, KPG. Okay, KPG, please. So this is uh, KB. Hi. Uh, what's your name? I'm Gabby. Gabby. <laughs> Good okay. afternoon, everyone. While waiting for my presentation. I'm Gabby from Kapustakan Popular Gramedia. This is our logo. I'm a part, uh, we are a part of the Compass Gramedia group. Uh, actually, at some, you know, uh, like international publishers gathering or events, many people are confused because they met so many people from Gramedia. You also from Gramedia, you also from Gramedia, you also from Gramedia. So I will get, uh, give you some uh, little, apa? And information about our company. Our main ma company is Compass Gray Media. One of its um, group uh, is for retail and publishing. Retail is for the bookstore named Gray Media. And we also have a publishing house. There are six of them. Um, this is us. The, it, I, I make this one uh, based on uh, the year it is established. So we are actually one of the youngest, and we are the smallest one of them. Um, KPG was founded in 1996. Uh, we are based in Jakarta under the media group, and we are specialized in fiction and popular nonfiction books. Uh, uh, popular nonfiction books meaning that we uh, actually KPG uh, usually um, publish the book that as thick as bricks, you know, <laughs> that big book, that boring book. But we want to make it um, popular. We want to make it, uh, you want to reach more uh, bigger market. So we make it more interesting, like we play with the layouts or maybe like uh, the, or, or the, from the, Nah, I'm blank. <laughs> we, to, so we make it more uh, interesting lah, gitu. Uh, as time goes by, uh, there are needs for uh, for us to cater our younger market. So we make new imprints. There are kiddo for children books and pop for young adult fiction and non-fiction. These are our books uh, by local author, KPG. Uh, this is our novels, actually. The first one is Laut Bercerita. Uh, it is from Leila S. Chudori, one of our mega bestsellers uh, until today. Uh, the second book is also from Leila S. Chudori. It is called Pulang. And then this one is Saman, written by Ayu Tami. It's our first novel, actually. It is published in 1996. This is uh, our... History, history books, um, and this is, uh, we also uh, published a book about the investment and also about the teaching. Our, our uh, kids imprints is Kido. This one is also already explained by Intan. This is a Balita uh, IP from uh, Indonesian IP. And uh, Kido also published a novel for kids. This is uh, mainly about mystery and detective story. Uh, this is uh, Mystery Guo Jepang and Creepy Cast Club series. And uh, this is Kido also 
uh, publish uh, books for uh, Muslim kids. One more minute, Gabby. Okay. This is uh, this is pop for the young adult. Uh, we mainly uh, this is for author. Is this one is sorry for rainy days. For sorry for rainy days by Naila Ali. Uh, this is a uh, like a. Uh, Oh, and this is our poetry books and also uh, self-help book. But uh, I'm here not to sell books because uh, Intan and Baweda and Farah will sell our books. I'm here to find uh, titles. Maybe you can uh, recommend us. Uh, this is what KPG are looking for. Uh, mainly Indonesian studies, fiction or non-fiction, and modern literature for market age 15 plus. Uh, and if it is written by a well-known scholar or has been translated into English, is it a plus point for us? Uh, as uh, for your information, th that books are our uh, translated books from that, that we acquired to translate it into Indonesian. And for Kido, Kido is looking for and activity books for three to seven years old. Time is up, Gabby. Okay, you can capture this one. <laughs> and last one, this is uh, pop. We are looking for self-improvement books, slice of life, current issues, in the format of essay, comic, graphic novels, and so on. So if you have these books, kindly contact us, Gabby or Pradika over there. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to check if there's a uh, Maswendra Marzuki from CMN Publishing. Masendra? No? Too long and he escaped. <laughs> okay, uh, Gagas Media, Raisa, are you here? Okay, you're next. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Okay, uh, it was, not, it was uh, nice to meet you all, my fellow publishers from Southeast Asia. I'm, I'm, I am Raisa and uh, I've heard about uh, Mas Amir <laughs> before, presented about our uh, one of our books, right? Misteri Patung Garam, and then uh, from Nuri Basril, and Mas Hafiz next to him, <laughs> we've met in Makassar. So I'm from Gagas Media, everybody. Okay, guys, uh, yes, Gagas Media was established in 20, uh, 2003. And then uh, the number of titles we publish per year is uh, like 40 to 48. And uh, the, the genre focus is novel, romance, literature, nonfiction, and then self-improvement. Okay, next. Okay, Gagas Media Hash published many books from Indonesian young writers. Yes, because our market is Gen Z and millennials. <laughs> and I'm a Gen Z, by the way. And if you have the same market as us, then we can be a best friend. <laughs> yes. Uh, or competitor. <laughs> And then uh, we believe that creative and productive young people can is the key to success our nation. And then they need to read a good book which is written by their peers. And from best-selling books to the box office movies, the title from Gagas Media Publish has been widely known. There are such Jomblo, Cinta Puccino, Koala Kumal, Refrain, Sabtu Bersama Bapak, Met and Mo, and many more. And because of the restricted of time, this presentation is gonna be quick and straightforward. Next. Okay, the first one is K. K is the novel uh, set in K during the Ambon riot. K is one of the areas in Maluku that is the most rapidly free from the civil war raging throughout Maluku. Novel K is the winner in the 2012 novel competition of Jakarta Art Council. Next. And then we have here Mystery Patung Garam, <laughs> which has been told by uh, Mas Amir previously. Next. 
Then we have Rentang Kisah or The Chronicle of Time. This book tells the story about an Indonesian teenage girl named Gita Safitri Devi who went to study in Germany and experienced a period of maternity alone there. And the other was chosen uh, for YouTube creator for change in 2018. And she has been released the second book. Yes, called... Um, Okay, this, uh, the second book is gonna be film anyway. Okay, next. We have Kambing Jantan or Male Goat. This is from Raditya Dika, uh, from the Best Indonesian Blog Award in two 2003. Raditya Dika wrote story about himself, witty, funny, and fresh story about teenagers. Okay, next we have uh, Sabtu Bersama Bapa or Saturday with Dad about a young man who learns to find love, about a man who learns to be good father and husband, about a mother who raised them lovingly and a father who left the message and promised to always be them. A bestseller book and has been filled. One more minute. Let's okay, start. next. Okay, so this is The Happy Little Soul. Uh, this is a nonfiction one. You can read it later, next. We have uh, like a 100,000 uh, years of, mu of Indonesia music history. Next. We have Lelaki Terakhir Yang Menangis Di Bumi or The Last Man Who Is Crying in the World from Aan Mansur. Next. We have Murjangkung and then next. Okay, this is Kisah Tanah Jawa. This is Horror Mystery. This is the horror one. Okay, next. We have Bung Di Banda, Man in Land of uh, Exile. Okay, this is uh, from Bandanera. Next. We have Jejak Dedari, and then next. This is, we, uh, we have the Alpha Girls Guide, who have become mega bestseller. Uh, this is, uh, Basically about the Alpha Girls Guide, yeah, written by Henry Manampiring, uh, who is introduced us to the Alpha female concept. And the next, we have uh, we have from the same authors Henry Manampiring the Compass, the Compass the Compass is introduced Arete, an ancient Greek philosophy of wisdom, which is courage, moderation, and justice that remains uh, relevant in modern life. Next. So we have this kimchi confession one. Yeah, this is the story of Safira Putri. Now it is being viral because of her part on Clash of Champion by Ruang Guru. And the book tells us about her struggle studying abroad as a scholarship awardee at Kais University. Okay, next. So uh, the last one is Rahasia Nusantara that I want to present to you guys. This is uh, from Asisi Suharyanto, because Indonesia is a great nation with a rich uh, history, hidden with the forgotten ruins of ancient temples. And the temples is in Jaffa, for example, and uh, still hold many untold mystery about past empire. Time is up, Raisa. Okay, thank you. And then uh, next, this is uh, our books who is uh, adapted to film and then next uh, this is two and then next okay this is coming soon in the cinema there are a lot of uh, books actually who is adapted to cinema so if we want to collaborate next call to me next <laughs> thank you okay thank you Raisa uh, next I'm going to call by uh, this is um Hello everyone, uh, my name is Catherine. I'm from Buku Aku Digital Indonesia. I think I haven't met all of you, but some uh, I have met before in Indonesia International Book Fair and also from IKAPI. So I think uh, this year is also our first time joining this event. And my slide is a little bit, um, it's actually 60 slides also, but I'm gonna be really, really fast. Um, 
So first of all, nice to meet everyone. I think um, welcome to our country for some people that uh, just arrived. And OK, let me start with our company. Our company is a startup company. Next. Um, we are a digital platform. Um, we started last year. We built this platform uh, for children. And we start um, visiting schools and educating, not educating, like sharing the love of reading uh, so that kids um, are back to reading. Because currently, I think in Indonesia, our literacy is quite low. And we like to introduce the fun of reading again. So we start doing Buku Aku in 2023. We did a press release on Buku Aku last year in May. And currently, we have a 1,000 books uh, in Buku Aku last year. And this year, we have a 1,500. I think we grow our collection from kindergarten, primary school to secondary school because there's a demand in uh, literacy uh, in school that they need uh, books for, for teachers to actually um, pers like motivate the students to read. Next. So this is our publishers um, that are already become partners with Buku Aku. We actually want everyone to join us, but our money is also limited. So we <laughs> sort of um, have to limit ourselves in partnering with everyone. But we actually want to become a partner to everybody. Next. And we are currently in 500 school, more than 500. 563, 17 provinces, 30, 30 cities. So we do travel last year from October to May so that we actually uh, introduce Buku Aku to the schools. Next. And this is our partners. And next. And currently our active users is 30,000. We are increasing uh, in 25% per month. Currently, there's a still growth in July because there's a school holiday. But we're going to travel um, promoting our product again soon. OK, and the books being read. Uh, with Buku Aku, we do have the data analytics per publishers. If um, you guys have worked with us uh, last year, I think we actually uh, can give you the publisher's data on how many books have been read and total hours and also the audio play. So our, our aim this year is to fill all the books with audio. Uh, last year, we only did 30% because I think we don't have uh, audio from all the publishers. But this year, we try to incorporate AI for uh, the books that are um, for um, books that are for students that are uh, 10 years old above. So we, for the younger younger collection, we try to do like a voiceover still, One being idealist about it. Booked. But okay. Being idealist about it, but I think uh, we want to incorporate audio and read to me so that um, it actually attract the kids. Next. OK, we start publishing books also, children's books. And only children's book. We focus on uh, leveling, bilingual. Next. This is our first book that's written by uh, Filipino te uh, teachers. And also, um, the illustrator is from Yogyakarta. Next, this is the translation for Indonesia. I think I'm going to skip to page 40. <laughs> Sorry. Page 40 for the leveling books. We also work with um, influencers. Uh, last year, we did three, which is Grace Tahir, and Alex Josephine Alexandra, and also Mishka and Devon, because we want to spread the brand awareness of reading. This is all our uh, bilingual. Why we focus on bilingual? Because when we travel um, outside Jakarta, we realize that teachers actually doesn't speak English very well. So they need help in introducing uh, books with uh, English and Indonesian language. Next. OK. Our leveling books. Uh, next. This is our, we focus on the leveling because I think there's a need also in school. So actually, when we go like through that journey last year, we learned that this is what uh, school needs for Indonesian books. Next. 
And this is our first series, Kubu Si Kucing Abu. is about a cat, um, a great cat named Kubu. So we actually um, have a leveling books based on Kubu. Uh, level one is 150 words, level two is 400 words, and level three is 700 words. The idea is for the kids to read um, the right level of books so that they keep uh, on motivating to read more books. Next. I think we need to skip to the last two pages. This is the series of Kubu. So Kubu, there is three levels. Um, each level, we have 10, 10 books. This is actually our last series that we try to make. Um, can you go back to the one that has a lot of uh, the green one? Yeah. OK, this one. So this set is actually 240 sets. Is uh, We want to introduce the phonetics of Indonesian language. Because if for phonics, I think there's a lot of option. But for Indonesian um, spelling, I think we I realized that when we go to school, there's only books for um, education, buku sekolah. But we want to introduce um, spelling in Indonesian in a fun way. That's why we create this series. This year, we're going to launch in EEBF for our series, uh, the B series, meaning um, there's an 80 um, books for the B series. Okay, next. This is the leveling of that um, Prabacha series. Time is up. Yep. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for listening. I hope we can be partners um, in the future. Thank you. Okay, next I'm going to call Mas Roni. Okay, while uh, we waiting for the presentation, uh, my name is Roni from uh, Margin Kiri. Uh, yes, uh, uh, founded in 2005, so next year we will be 20 years. Uh, and uh, we publish mostly on humanities and social theory, political economy, history, Indonesian studies, and and so on, but we also publish uh, international fiction. Uh, uh, and I try to keep it short, so I stick to the titles that uh, I like to offer. Uh, next, please. Yes, uh, this is uh, Orang Orang Oitimu, or People from Oitimu, uh, a novel by uh, Felix Nesi. Uh, Felix is quite a rising star in Indonesian literary scene these days. Uh, he's writing uh, many things, uh, short stories, novel, poems, and also uh, monologues. Uh, he, in 2022, he became a writer in, in residence in Iowa. So this is a novel about... Uh, uh, Oitimu is a is a s small and remote village in East uh, Nusa Tenggara uh, in the border with uh, now Timor Leste. So uh, it uh, the yeah the the conflict around this uh, this village is uh, affecting the people in the in the village. Uh, uh, conflict that they really uh, not uh, know, know about uh, between uh, uh, colonial uh, Portu Portuguese colonialism and then uh, uh, their uh, liberation and also Indonesian annexation and then uh, uh, Indonesian dictatorship. Uh, so uh, this. You, you you can you can uh, read yourself the the, the uh, synopsis um, there, there are many uh, many interesting uh, character in, in this novel and it's uh, uh, in the uh, in the history of Indonesian literature that uh, mostly uh, uh, focus on on Java this this novel uh, really give a really fresh uh, error uh, next please uh, 
uh, we already sold this in uh, German and in in uh, in English in US a uh, couple days ago our German uh, partner uh, sent this photo uh, the book is uh, finished printing and ready for sale in September the 2nd uh, so we have a uh, complete english and german manuscript uh, ready the the english will be published in uh, february next year by archipelago books this novel also winner of uh, some uh, awards in indonesia uh so uh what yeah i'm looking for another translation in southeast asian uh, language maybe and also maybe uh english edition for uh, uh southeast asian region one more minute mas roni okay uh the next uh, book uh, uh next please uh this is the mars of ni uh Uh, uh from Aceh uh woman Ida Fitri uh she works daily as a public health in public health office in in is as a vacancy but uh she she wrote uh, fiction uh, after uh, published three books of short stories this is her first novel and uh the winner of the last year uh, the third winner of the last year uh, Jakarta Art Council and manuscript uh, competition uh, the, the setting is uh, in the early 2000 when when uh, the the escalation of conflict between uh, Indonesian government uh, and the uh, Uh, the guerrilla from free aceh movement is uh, uh, was escalating and this the, the story of this uh, women trap in, in the middle of the uh, conflict uh, yes that that's all for now uh, next please uh, yeah uh, there are many more interesting title in our uh, catalog you can see in uh, our website and there are some titles that already have uh, English uh, samples and English translation so uh, please contact me anytime thank you thank you Mas Roni thank you Mas Roni next we have uh, Bunga from MGL publisher uh, good, ev- good evening everyone so my name is Bunga I'm a project officer from MCL publisher and oh yeah <laughs> And um do not blend with the background you cannot do that. <laughs> yeah. So Come actually forward. So actually I just knew that we have to do some presentation. This is the file that you sent us. Yeah. Yeah. So I prepared this presentation 30 minutes before the session so sorry for the minimalist presentation. Bukan yang ini Pak, yang aku kirim ke WhatsApp. So ya, yeah, uh, PT Mekar Cipta Lestari or MCL Publisher is a new publishing house that was established during the pandemic in 2020, same as Mil Flores, who has a published over 30 book titles, spinning fiction, non-fiction, and children books. So here are our four titles that I personally think are very ready to publish because the manuscript uh, are already in English. So where is the book, Pak? Okay. Ini terlalu Ayo, ayo, Pak. <laughs> So, so where is the so presentation? If, if you yeah. stand you in sing. the middle, then the presentation will start. So yeah, 
ya just oh, yang gitulah <laughs> So, can I continue without? So, yeah, how yeah. many yeah. titles do you want to present? Only four. Okay, Only just four. say, Only what four. is the title? Only four. So, first is Siri. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Just continue so, aja, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah just okay. continue. What is the title? <laughs> uh, Siri copyrights has been sold to Prapasan Publishing from Thailand via Elite. So, thank you so much, Mbak Sartika. For the help, and uh, already directly sold with Biblio Publisher, Biblio Press, sorry, from Malaysia. Both of them are still in translation progress. Next, nah, ya, yeah. maaf ya, sorry for only the white image. Uh, ya, yeah, first, uh, Siri will be published in Thai language uh, from Praparsan Publishing. And in Malay language from Biblio Press Malaysia, and uh, Insya Allah will be released and launch in November uh, at Indonesia International Book Fair. Next, okay. So long, but I will make it short. Series start with the sudden death of corrupt official Bahjan, who allegedly commit suicide. Uh, and of course impossible in Indonesia, a corruptor suicide. However, there are many oddities in his death amid the preparation for his burial. None of his three children show up. So uh, this is the where the story begin uh, and unfold the secret story of each character. Uh, Asmayani Kusrini, writer, uh, writes in a unique style. Uh, you will be introduced to many characters uh, related to uh, another by association by association with Bahjan, from their point of view, we get to understand what is Siri and what is the perception of her honor and same. Uh, the storyline goes backward and backward to where it all begin uh, when he shames and uh, the family and has to pay for it uh, for the sake of honor of the family. By the end of the book, whether they like it or not, the reader will also get their own take on Siri. So basically Siri is not nikah siri ya yeah, in indonesia not uh, secretly marriage with another woman not uh, it's from bugis it's about uh, honor and shame next uh, misi misi in indonesian means uh, means mission in this novel misi is also the name of main character misi is an orphan bro uh, born from a chinese torajan mother uh, toraja is from south sulawesi an un, and an unknown father so we don't know the who is the father until the end of the story uh, she was raised by her grandmother uh, who kept her in the dark about the parents uh, one more on, minute okay so she is very interesting character for me she was raised in a rural in a rural background surrounded by people with christian and animism belief but uh, her grandmother uh, insists that missy is a muslim so he has to teach in a Muslim uh, culture. Okay, next. Next lagi. And this is uh, our mystery, horror, and thriller genre. So actually, we I thought that we only have a meeting, so I already make, uh, so I already arrange meeting with Pak Amir. And this is the book that I want to introduce to you, Pak. Uh, Bino and... Oh, yes, mantap. Terbaiklah. <laughs> so, 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 uh, this book, Bino and Bara Dalam Sekar, or The Furry Within, both uh, of this book, written by Zaki Zaihutan. This is an ongoing, ongoing book series. Uh, but you can also read each book separately because the only thing that connect each book is only the setting. The setting name Tanah de Juru, uh, local place, forest, forest actually, forest place in West Java. This book is mystery, horror, and thriller genre. Uh, jangan di next, biarin aja. Tanah de Juru is the forest uh, where is Satan, demons, and all evil spirit gather, uh, led by the elder man evil. Uh, here anyone who is who is controlled by anger, lust, and ego with the most perfect 
evil intention can ask everything and can be granted but of course uh, there is a price to pay uh, the blood of innocent people life gitu Seperti itu. Uh, ya dikit lagi pak eh mbak <laughs> Our trademark is in story that are very Indonesian. We highlight natural Indonesian culture, issue, setting, but still have a modern touch. We are sure that our book we will uh, easily to digest, especially for reader uh, from Southeast Asia, because we have same culture and natural background. So next, next, terakhir aja langsung. Nah, please, if you interest with something, contact me. Bunga <laughs> Putri. To bunga at mcl uh, slash group dot co. Yeah, thank you for thank you so much for your attention, guys. Okay, okay uh, I'm going to check if uh, Sefe Pen Amin is here uh, from Zul Islam, Mas. No. Okay, I think uh, so. We should go with huh? Panu uh, with uh, Evelyn first. Four minutes, Mbak Evelyn. Not yet one thing, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, since I only have four minutes, I'm going to skip the greetings. And I'm going to be a bookseller because I'm representing Literasia. Uh, we are a rights, uh, rights agency uh, for literature, uh, for any genres, actually, children's book, uh, fiction, non-fiction, anything that is book-based. And um, as you can see here, we also represent illustrators as well, Indonesian illustrators. So uh, four minutes is very short. I'm going to be a bookseller again. So I'm going to read to you one, one, one example of uh, the books that we curated throughout the years. So Literasia was funded, uh, maybe established just this year or uh, last year. Uh, and even though we just established, we have been uh, in the business for around 10 to 15 years. And I'm going to read Who Farted by Nur Hadi. So this is actually uh, the writer, the author and illustrator is actually a person from Nura Publishing, but he decided to publish his own books. So, the lion, the king of the jungle, had a birthday party at his house. He invited the monkey, the rabbit, the bear, and the fox to party and have fun. But suddenly, There was a farting sound. All the animals were startled. They li lively, their lively party turned into silence. Who farted? Asked the lion, looking at the monkey, the rabbit, the bear, and the fox. It wasn't me, replied the monkey. My fart doesn't sound like that. My fart sounds like this. The lion nodded his head. Yes, your farting sound is good and different, said the lion. So who farted, said the lion, looking at the rabbit, the bear, and the fox. Not me, replied the rabbit. My fart doesn't sound like that. My fart sounds like... This, the lion was mesmerized. Your fart sounded like you, he said. So the regulation for read aloud is not to read all of the books. If you are interested, you can contact me. That's one book. So we curated a lot of books. Um, actually, Literacia represent not just I think all publisher, major publisher. We mainly, uh, nowadays, we are representing small publishing house and also uh, 
like this self publishing books this is Aaron Randis actually uh, have you ever seen a book that looks like a magazine but it's it's a tutorial for uh, taking care of rabbit and then this book this is a book of houses and not houses this is a book about house it's uh, shaped like a house and it's telling the story about a house with the POV of the house and but seeing the family that grew inside and this one actually won the best children's book one more minute yes <laughs> thank you the best children's book uh, by Tachita this year and this is story about my father is a fisherman so uh, I think in Southeast Asia, this story can, can be related to uh, all of the country because we have beaches and fishermen and uh, islands. Okay, and the other, I think we have a lot of other books, uh, but Literasia is mainly built by this guy, Yani, who, who actually funded Literasia as a literature and Asia. So if you have anything uh, that you might want to request, we don't just sell Indonesian books, but we connect uh, with uh, international publishers. And maybe we can show the contact page, the, the, just the single one. The single one. We also represent Nora's books, but they already represent the, them themselves. So I don't represent them. Not okay, in this yeah. file, but uh, yeah, yeah. in the uh, we yellow can, one. We can, yeah, we can send cuts later. Okay, thank okay. you so much. And thank I will you, take this. Thank you. Yeah. So thank we, you. Uh, we have the best for last, Pak Anung. Our best for last. We serve the best for last, Pak Anung. We have the floor. Hello everybody, my friends, uh, publishing uh, houses from Southeast Asia. It means including Indonesia, of course. Uh, I, I, in fact, I didn't prepare because I, I didn't expect that. You don't need preparation, yeah, you okay. already <laughs> good at this. Okay. Uh, so, so here, here uh, I get you. This is. Okay. Here you can. Okay, please uh, next. Berbeda berbeda licensi is uh, we established in the 2013. So uh, now uh, more than now 11 years old. But uh, I'm now the I think the youngest person in this room. Uh, Please, please, uh, next, please. This one, uh, fire, it is uh, already taken by the Philippine uh, publisher, Anfil, uh, by uh, uh, Anfil is the uh, big, biggest, yeah, one of the biggest, yeah, I'm Andrea. And then, uh, Mantal Mas taken by uh, a Singaporean publisher, and then the next, next. I I like your way, Singaporean publishers. Next, Ring Ring by by Singaporean publishers, and when it rains by a UK publisher. Next. Next, little, little chief goes to the public shop by uh, United Arab Emirates publisher, Tita by Singaporean publisher. Next, Felix, just, just promoted, Felix uh, from Buku Aku. 
and then the next please next Navila is taken by a UK publisher the Mara family in fact uh, will be published in Korea but uh, no no news <laughs> no follow up okay <laughs> sorry next so in Indonesian we call it a uh, PHP or something. <laughs> PHP. PHP. Okay, next, please. I believe uh, the costing is the correct terms, Pak Nung. Yeah, costing, yeah. Uh, a cat on the uh, in this one. A cat on the moon uh, published in the Egypt and also in Colombia. So Arabic and Spanish. Yeah, the author is here, actually. Where is the author? Uh, it's just Mas outside. Uh, Mas oh, Anton yeah. and he's is having his birthday to today. Yeah, so, Mas yeah. Anton Gornia. Javanese gentry is from uh, um, Egypt. Taken by uh, an Egypt uh, publisher. Next, please. The Weaver Bird from Syria. Angati Tupas from Egypt. Next. Next. So, in fact, I represent a Lontar publisher. Lontar publishers really have uh, quite a lot of collection from Indonesian literature already uh, translated into English. Telegram is uh, taken by an uh, Egyptian publisher. Next, please. Ah, sorry. Sorry, Telegram is the old Telegram, not the new Telegram. So it is about the old telegram from the <laughs> from the olden days. Next, please. Secret girl. Uh, why it's here? Because I, I sold it to uh, German to Germany. So it is the first time uh, Gadis Kretek uh, went international. Uh, taken by a German publisher. Next, please. Bound, taken by uh, a German publisher also. Oh, sorry, by a uh, Egyptian publisher. Not Virgin Mary, it's taken by a uh, Italian publisher and United States publisher. Next, please. Bandit Sense of Java, taken by uh, UK publisher and also Indonesian. Because uh, the original title is, and the original content is in English, written by and also an Australian uh, author. So I think that is uh, the selections of Borobudur's uh, titles that we really represent and all already uh, sold uh, in several countries, I think in the United States and in Europe and in uh, Asia, including Japan. In, in fact, I, I will see This is only the sample of the books that already sold uh, abroad, but I don't bring the uh, translation, uh, I mean the overseas edition, like this one, for example, to Singapore, this one to uh, UK, this one to Turkey, this one to uh, Singapore, this one to Japan. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but I think uh, our time is up. So just a quick announcement, everyone. Uh, I'm going to hand over to... Uh, okay, thank you very let, much. Yeah, let yeah. Nung finish. Okay. Uh, please give him a, a huge applause. So just a quick announcement before I uh, I hand over this uh, I let with the closing. So we have 
So thank you so much for sticking uh, out throughout this session. It's uh, like over two hours, so thank you for staying with, sticking with us. So I hope you, uh, you can get to know new faces, uh, making friends. So now after this, uh, we have a, another networking session. It's, well, it's some, a bit kind of happy hour. So you can just, uh, after this, you can go uh, up to the second floor uh, after the stairs and you go up and then uh, we will have uh, license officers to, to direct you. We have some, a bit of ref 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 refreshment. So then you can continue uh, chatting over there. So yeah, so I think that's a quick announcement for me. So Mbaweda, please. Thank you, Mas Yani. So don't forget to join us in the networking session. Happy hour. Just next level. You go directly and then turn left and then there will be an escalator. Okay. Thank you so much for all the participants today. On behalf of Jakarta Content Week, we would like to thank you for attending this event. And we still have a lot of interesting session on Jack10. For more information on Jack10, follow us on IG at Jack10. See you again and thank you so much. Bye-bye. Good evening, everybody.